Now, let's see if you can guess who I'm talking about. He's been called a pocket prat, a sanctimonious <laughs> dwarf, and David Cameron apparently once referred to him as the little <laughs> Even those who claim to like him call him the squeaker. <laughs> and there's the giveaway. I'm talking about common speaker John Burkow, who this week, in his teensy little shoes, waded headlong into a constitutional row by trying to ban the leader of the free world from speaking at Westminster. He effectively said it was because the Donald was racist, sexist and an opponent of equality. So why didn't his principles stop him cozying up to the Emir of Kuwait where homosexuality is illegal or China's president who rules over a totalitarian state which executes more people than any other? Doesn't this hypocrite see that his interference could scupper the hard work Mrs May's done to get us a trade deal with the US? Is Burkhouse so arrogant he thinks his political views, which are supposed to be ruthlessly neutral, are more important than what happens to Britain post-Brexit? His showboating this week was a disgrace, an unconstitutional act by a self-aggrandizing little man desperate to secure his place in history, which he did, as the speaker whose giant ego shamed his great office and himself. I actually think uh, John Burko was right standing up for our values. I can't believe... I can't believe... What, what right has he... This is a man who has no power to say that, mm. a man who's always talking about the, the traditions of Parliament, and he rode roughshod yep. through those traditions yep. by saying... what. Parliament it's called is principles. Not, no, no, he, <clears> but that's not his place to have. His place in there is to moderate debate. It's not to be part of it. It's not to use the grand organ that is Parliament to push his own political agenda, which is what he. But it's not a political agenda. Yeah, it it's is. It's a principle. P principles and politics are two different things. No, but it, so if you've got, if you believe so strongly in something, then it is your duty to stand up for that. No, no, it isn't. Irrespective of no. your position, it absolutely no. is. He has no business making derogatory remarks about about the leader of the world's. Big Biggest economy and military power. It's not his place to do that. And he's been told that by Lord Fowler. Yeah, but, the, the but then what you're Lord. saying, by him not saying anything, is just as political as the accusation that you're making, because you're saying he shouldn't have said anything because of our relationship with the States. OK, so why didn't he say something about um, the President of China coming? Yeah. You know, we, we, know, we know about what okay. the President of China is. He, uh, China <clears throat> carries out more executions than yeah, all yeah. the other countries in the world put together. You can be put to death in China for going on a protest march. Yeah. So how how is that? That, how is that any better than, than what Donald right. Trump did? If you call, even if you think Donald Trump is racist and sexist, mm. um, he's, not, he's not executing people. That doesn't happen in his country. Or the mm. Emory of Kuwait. We know what happens with him. We, we know what happens. Israelis are banned from Kuwait. That's racist. Mm. But I agree. I'm, nobody, not, I'm not disagreeing with that. Let's listen to what he said. Let's listen to what he said, and then, okay, and then Rachel can pick up. Before the imposition of the migrant ban... I would myself have been strongly opposed to an address by President Trump in Westminster Hall. After the imposition of the migrant ban by President Trump, I am even more strongly opposed to an address by President Trump in Westminster Hall. Now, the thing is, just with, with China and Kuwait, I agree with you. I think some of the things that, that, that we, we know happens in, in other countries is appalling, OK? I think what we should be expecting from our common ally, from a country that we've helped develop democracy with, that we've, we've, we've worked with hand in hand to deal with the rights um, across all the spectrums, has been incredible, OK? So I think it's our duty to expect more of our closest ally and expect a higher standard from them and what he's doing, he might well lose his job okay. because of this. Let it doesn't just, mean I don't admire him. Carol, can I... I, just, sure. I think Graham's got a point. I think that the Speaker just squeaked away with this because the cards have been thrown up in the air with Donald Trump in the White House. For the first time, we've got a president who is a really quite an unknown and unstable quantity. And I think at that point, I think it was quite legitimate of the Speaker to say... In a, don't forget, it's his house. The speaker has his oh, lodgings no. there. He doesn't want Sorry, he challenge. doesn't want the Trump challenge. coming to his party. <laughs> challenge. But and one second, 
And also, I'd like to go back to the bathrobes thing. I think that was very interesting. <laughs> I think men should be banned from wearing bathrobes <laughs> as well as Trump. You don't want to see me naked. Well, perhaps well you do want to say that. Right. As well as Trump coming Just to address both houses. On a point of order and through the mm. chair, if I may, it's not his invitation to give. It's no, what are called three key holders, which is mm. the Speaker of the Lords, Norman now Lord Fowler, the former uh, Conservative Minister, John Burko, and, and a member of the, of the Royal Chamberlain's office. It's not his invitation to either give or not to give. Mean he, he was can't. totally out of order. Let me just finish. And, and just to, to bring it to, to Graham to an area that you will understand, <laughs> he should be like the best referee mm -hmm. who controls the game and is never seen. And indeed, Bernard Wetherill, who was arguably one of the most distinguished speakers of recent mm -hmm. years, with the exception perhaps of Betty Boothroyd, once said, the perfect speaker is the referee. He or she is not the star. You are there to facilitate the forum. He is totally and utterly out of position. I happen to think he's rather a jumped-up individual. Exactly. I don't like mm. the cut of his jib. And if, as you say, it might be the end of the speaker, or even Squeaker Burko, mm. bring on the day. But, 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 I, but, but I think what he did was actually <coughs> political. I think it was, it was really political. I think Burkow is, is going to... He's intimated that he's going to give it the job next year. Mm. I think he's lining up his next job. He's always, he's always ached for attention from everyone. But I think this was all about what he he's going to do next because he knows full well that his job is to be ruthlessly impartial like I said in the intro he's supposed to be and also that as Nick says is made by three other people and he and he just rode roughshod through all the rules and the laws of parliament and you said it's legitimate what he did it's totally illegitimate what he did yes but it's in tune with the times and I no. want to hear what Michelle's which is look, can, I just, say, with the times, can I just say what is happening is Trump presidency is a piece of theatre. The reason we're all still talking about it is that he's brilliant at keeping our interest. Burko has to do something slightly outside the box in order to no. wake us up to the fact no. that actually this isn't a performative piece of entertainment. This that is, is quite not his serious. job. Yeah, I take your point, but he maybe he had to He'd do something. He and took a risk in well, order to make a point. I hope he pays legitimate. for taking the risk. I really hope it is because he, he doesn't have the majority of MPs with him. He's already been admonished by the leader of the House of Lords who said it wasn't his place. And when the leader was asked what he would have done of, of the Lords, he said, that is not my job. Mm. He was. He was actually. He know, got clapped in the Commons. Oh, mm. so. He, no, he, no, no. Hang on. He, he, got, no, he <laughs> got clapped by the SNP by Dennis Skinner and Harriet Harman said he was doing. He got a well and done. As you from say, Dennis if any of those people oh. and agree with you, you're doing something. And wrong. just lastly, Michelle, before you come in, interestingly enough, when he was applauded, the applause was allowed to run on. Yes. Yes. If you recall, mm. when the Scots Nats <laughs> took their place, they were applauded, yeah, yeah, and he quite rightly said, "We do not have applause now." Unless, of course, you're applauding the great John Burke. Oh, come on, Ken Clark was applauded after his. Barnstormer. Probably because he's Sorry, Michelle. My take, my take on all of this is I would like to agree with you mm. in the sense of should we have principles? Yes. <clears throat> should we try and get our allies to behave in a great way? Yes. So I share your ambition. I share what you'd like to achieve. But when I think of what John Beck has done, to me it's virtue signaling. Mm. I have mm -hmm. a real problem with... To me, everyone just wants to bash Trump. It's become so hysterical. Well, I hope so. <laughs> well it's because, but it has. It's become so hysterical, and it's become people's favourite pastime to do. Mm. We don't even know when this state visit is going to happen. We don't know what will or won't have happened between now and then. He may well, uh, probably unlikely, but he may well have settled down and started to act slightly more presidential in his ways before he even arrives here. And I just <clears> think to allow to your point, QA China, I think it is very hypocritical. But I would, in an ideal world, like to live by your standards, but unfortunately we don't. But, you, but, but the other part of the problem is that, you know, he's... Theresa May is desperately trying to get us a good uh, trade desperate deal. Desperate being the right word. No, she, no never mind. That's, <laughs> another, that's another argument. She's desperately trying to get us a trade deal. And she's being hampered by what I call all the... When I say little men, I don't just mean the, the size of them. I mean little men like Burkow, yeah. like, like Nick Clegg, like, um, what, do you, what do you call the, the Tim, Tim Farron, who are... Mm. Who are who are thwarting her at every turn with what they're saying yeah, because, about what's going to happen after Brexit. Yeah, because and, they and should be, she's got to be challenged. Yes, she but, can't yes, just go... But if, but know, if I mean, Theresa May doesn't get a, a good mm, trade deal, yeah. it's not going to be Burkow so who's blamed, okay. it's not, it's not okay. going to be Farron, let, let it's going to be her, and, and they're making her job that right, much harder, okay. let, as, let as let are speak. all the protests. Do, do we all agree that Trump is about protectionism? Do we all agree that? Yep. That's yeah, what he said at every every opportunity. So he's about protectionism. So the fact we've gone to see him... The first, you know, the first prime minister, first person to go and see him of, of, of importance. Um, we've gone over there, and during that meeting, we've said, "Come for a state visit." Do you not think that just shows how desperate we are no. post Brexit well, to try to try and ally us? Uh, 
align no. ourselves. We're trying to protect ourselves. We're trying but, to get the best. But the, Look, what, so you're prepared to throw all our values out of the out of the dishwater? throwing our values. How are we throwing our values out? Be, because window? because of the way he behaves. He's Why the, didn't we? Pause? He's the president. You, you are brilliantly running defensive smoke screens because the issue of debate <laughs> here is whether John Burko. So we're not debating whether Trump, whether Mrs May should have made the invitation. That's a whole mm. separate conversation. The point Carol made is that John Burko has exceeded his remit, and she's absolutely palpably right. He is not. He's not the Foreign Secretary happens to your brother, he's not the Prime Minister, it is not his place. And I would argue, actually, mm. it's quite dangerous mm. because yes. let's not get, try and have a conversation about Brexit, but in the post-Brexit world we need allies and they are, our, I would argue, our longest standing ally. And if, if the Foreign Secretary's got a view, fine, you, you can get elected out, you've got a position and everything. Mm. The Prime Minister, I get it. The Speaker enjoys such a rarefied and privileged yes. one. He should keep his gob shut. Well, I'm going to have to keep my gob open now. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> my debate. <laughs>